Hi everyone, I will be painting a peony for you today and I wanted to talk to you about the five ways to add interest to your floral paintings. Why is it important to add interest to your paintings? If you think about your paintings to be a storybook and when you choose to read a book you want it to be a page turner. You want it to be something that holds your interest, that makes you want to sit down and finish the book there and then. And you almost want to get to the end and you want to feel all the feelings and you want to be all the characters and you want to put yourself in their shoes and our paintings are just like that in a way because we as artists when we paint we want to try and keep the viewers interest in the same way that we read books and we want it to be page turner books that keep us reading till the very end we as artists want to keep the viewers attention for as long as possible when they're viewing our art and why is that it's because we want them to feel we want them to feel something when they see our art and in the same way that when they read a book and they put themselves in different characters shoes and they feel all the feelings within that um, short story that they read we want them to feel when they view our art and the more that they are able to feel the more connected they are to that piece of art that you have created so that's what it's really about it's about connecting people through what we paint and the more you are able to make people feel the more evoking your paintings are the more they are able to connect to themselves through your work and your work becomes relatable to them. So anyway, let's dig into the five ways to add interest to your paintings. So number one, you can add an element of surprise to your floral paintings. That could be in the way that you use colour, or it could be the way that you have used composition. It could be adding a pop of a bright colour that you wouldn't usually use. Um, you could add an element of surprise through underpainting as well. Underpainting is having a warm tone to your work or even a cool tone that makes your painting pop in a certain way and adding a very warm orange or a red as a base on your page and then covering that layer with another colour. There's a warmth that you can create by underpainting in that way. And it's a, an unexpected kind of surprise element that you can create in your work. Um, point number two is showing movement in your paintings by painting flowers in different directions. Some can be facing the left corner of your page, some can be face, wilting downwards, some can be um, facing an, the opposite direction. But the key here is to make sure that your flowers are not all facing in the same direction because your eye will just be taken into one kind of direction on your page. Remember, you're aiming for balance. And if flowers are all facing one direction on your page, it makes it heavy on one side. So you want to try and create some harmony within your painting. Point number three is painting flowers at different stages in their own growth cycle. So it could be that you paint a couple of buds and then you paint some flowers that are just about to open and then you paint some that are in full bloom. And that actually tells a story in a way when you see that because um, it's actually taking your mind through the process of nature. You're also sharing the concept of time through your painting when you're doing that, which is really interesting. Um, so that's another way of turning your painting into a story. And point number four is to help your eyes move across the page or help the viewer's eyes move across the page by intertwining and connecting your flowers as you work through your painting. And this is quite important, this point, because people always ask me, like, how do you think of your composition? And there are so many steps and stages of learning about composition that I've been through. Um, but in a nutshell, I always paint in a C shape or an S shape because these shapes are organic and curves are generally organic and organic shapes are really what you see in nature in the shape of leaves in the shape of vines in the shape of all sorts of things that you will come across outside in nature so i try and emulate that through painting in c shapes or s shapes and 
that way your eye is constantly being carried through your painting it's almost like you're following a trail and your eye is naturally gently guided through the page it helps your eyes it doesn't make it jarring that's the last thing you want to do when you're painting is having something that's really jarring for the eyes that makes the eye uncomfortable and the last point is about creating a focal point or a couple of focal points within your painting that instantly and initially attract your eyes to your painting so it could be something that's really captured your your attention it could be a pot of color it could be the way that you've painted a, a flower in full bloom when i said earlier that um you could be painting your flowers at different stages in their growth cycle that flower in full bloom could be your hero flower so a hero flower is the flower that everybody will instantly be drawn to in that first five seconds when they see your painting and that is the attention grabber that is the star of the show that is the thing that most people will want to talk about and then the rest of the painting is full of foliage and filler flowers so the filler flowers are the connecting flowers almost that connect your eye all around the page so these are flowers with stems that have movement such as sweet peas and even longer stem flowers like delphiniums don't forget you can always use foliage and leaves to help guide and connect your eye through your painting. Anyway, I hope you found that useful and I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you add interest to your paintings.